Hello, book breakers. Thanks for taking a break to think about books. Today, we're in Stoke Newington to find out about literary festivals. Stoke Newington is a beautiful little area of London, famous since the 17th century for attracting radicals and free thinkers, including bookish heroes and heroines like Daniel Defoe and Mary Wollstonecraft. Directly inspired by the Mavericks and Rabble Rousers, in 2010, Liz and her husband Pete decided to bring books and bedlam together and begin Stoke Newington Literary Festival. I decided to catapult myself over there in the run-up to the event and make a nuisance of myself finding out what goes into preparing a literary festival. So I've been running it since 2010. Um, it feels like five minutes ago, and it feels like about 500 years ago. So I was going around literary festivals with my husband, the author, uh, Pete Brown. His books are available in all good bookshops. And um, I just suddenly realised that Stoke Newton was one of the most fantastic places to hold a literary festival. So Edgar Allan Poe, studied at school just over there and Daniel Defoe wrote more plant is just down there. Mary Wollstonecraft invented feminism just down that road over there. Um, so it's a perfect place to celebrate great ideas and great books. Um, and so once I had the idea it wouldn't go away and it was one of the, I've had lots of ideas all the way through my life, um, you know, setting up a nice shop, selling nice things, all that kind of stuff that we all dream about. Um, and I mentioned it to a couple of people and I said, I'm oh, setting up a literary festival in Stoke Newington. And I sort of hoped that someone would say, so that's a great idea and every single person I spoke to said what a fantastic idea so I realised I had to do it um, so that was seven years ago. The Stoke Newington Literary Festival offices are above the historic library in Stoke Newington. for keeps, unlocking her surgeon's heart, taming her navy dock, daring to date her ex. Also medical romance. Then we've got Regency. Um, lesson to learn. It's brilliant. I love it. I love it. Let me yeah. Apple calls us the Lit Fest idiots. <laughs> they share the building with lots of books, lots of people who like to read books, and even some artists, a few of whom have put together this literary telephone. When you pick it up, you can hear the first and last lines of some of their favourite books. I met one of their lovely interns. So I've been interning just for about a month. So from the beginning of May, day to day, I come in, drink coffee. <laughs> um, no, look, look, look for press coverage, write press releases, um, do social media work. It's just great that it's, uh, it's been growing and we've received so much local support and it's, um, yeah, I think it's really positive. The Literary Festival has lots of friends in the local community and Liz took me to meet just a few of them. There's the coffee shops that provide the coffee, the wine shops that provide the wine. One of our favourite people, they're providing all our wines over festival. Hello. <laughs> and some of the shops even do displays around Stoke Newington Literary Festival. This Amazing. is probably the best vintage clothing shop in the whole of um, North London. It's called Strut, so do come in. Window. It's amazing. So Andrew Logan, the artist, um, he set up the alternative to this world. We've got some of his sculptures hanging in Stoke Newton this weekend, and there's some in here, so come along and have a look. Amazing, as part of the festival? Yes. That's really cool. We met um, when he, well, we wanted to stock some more food products in the shop and so I looked up some honey in London and came across his brand and dropped them an email and then um, we ordered some from them and then... That and now it. what's happening? We're engaged. <laughs> I was actually scared to go to literary festivals when I went with my husband to his first couple because I just didn't know what to expect and I thought it would just be full of people very earnestly discussing really serious literature and it wasn't um, but this festival in particular was set up to make sure that whether you just like football or you just like cooking or you love music there's a way into great books about all those subjects so we've got an event for the tree um, for those people who just like trees and not reading 
Uh, we've got lots of stuff about music. If you're a grime fan, I know it's hard to believe, but if you're a grime fan, we've got a fantastic event just over there about the history of punk in Hackney and how it's kind of mutated into grime in the East End. Um, so that's why I set it up really, was to make things a lot more accessible and a lot more fun. Because um, I worked in advertising for years and years and years and I'd say to people, what sort of books are you reading at the moment? And people would say, oh, I don't really read books. And that astonished me. So this is my mission to make people put down their mobile phones and pick up a great book. Have you ever been to a literary festival? Did you enjoy it? Are they scary places to be? Are they great places to be? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching Book Break and we'll see you in our next one.